Hello everybody, welcome back. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. Drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Press the bell icon as well. Check out the top right eye for more nice links. Today is a bit more of a polished video, but I really want to get into it since we have some tedious things to do. But it'll still be fun. It'll make our game look a lot nicer. So what we have right now is one little thing that I want to change. So I'm just going to close all the tabs. I want to go to my tile map. It's under the map filter here, tilemap.cpp, and I'm going to go all the way down to render. And it's a very small change. The thing is, we're showing all of the enemy spawner tiles while we're playing the game. I really don't want to do that. I only want to show them if we want to debug it. So I'm going to just control X that section here, and I'm going to paste it under show collision inside this if statement. Now it's going to look a lot cleaner when we play the game. I'm sure you'll see it next time we run it. Now when that's done, I have a few things I want to do, some gripes that I want to fix. The thing is, we can't really see the item value level and type in the GUI for player. I really want to see that so we can debug the weapons later on. So first things first, let's open our item.h and let's create a few functions here just to get these three values. We have values for damage, all that stuff already in weapon, but for items, we don't have these base value getters. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to call accessors here. I'm going to create a section for that and I'm going to do a const short unsigned reference get type const and I'm going to make these in line just for fun because I, I want to start doing that. It's a lot easier. Return this type and I can just control D these and I'm going to rename these to get level and get value and then change the type. Since those aren't short, we're going to remove the short portion and we're going to say get level and get value. So just to recap quickly, make sure it looks exactly like this. Don't forget to switch these values in here and also don't forget to remove the short and change the names otherwise you're gonna have a lot of issues sometimes you'll get issues when you have these you miss one of these consts since it's a reference you you want to have both of these consts here now these will be accessible in our player.cpp we have a really nice function here to print out stuff right here under two string character tab this function is specifically made for us to display things in the character tab so I'm gonna add a new place here I'm gonna say weapon level and I'm just going to go go ahead and start adding things here. But before I can do that, I need a weapon pointer W equals this weapon. This will help me a lot because I don't want to write this weapon all the time. So I'm just creating a weapon pointer. Basically, you can make this const if you want. You can make the attribute component const as well. Now let's start getting W get a level and add a new line. I'm going to control D these lines, but you want to remove these semicolons here. Otherwise, you're going to get a bunch of errors. So remember to remove those. Just duplicate a bunch of these lines and let's start going ham here. Get level, get type and then get value. I'm going to need one more. So remember to remove that semicolon. Get range, weapon range, weapon damage min, weapon damage max. Now we have a few more things here. Now we can see and debug our weapon directly in the game. So we don't have to go outside and kind of print out stuff to the console. The last part now is going to be to change these get type with the new functions we created get value now to the get range and get damage get damage min get damage max. While we're at it, let's go into our sword.cpp and remove this printout thing because we're not going to need that anymore since we're already printing stuff out to the GUI inside the game. As we can see in player now, we have a function called get damage. And what that does is it actually gets the random value between the damage min and max, but this is also accounting for our damage max and min from our attribute component. I want to be able to see that in my GUI as well. I don't only want to see the weapons damage min and max because that's what's going to happen if we keep it like this. So I want to create a cool little thing where we're going to do, of course, get damage min and max, but within parentheses, we're going to see how much our attribute component is contributing to this. So make a cool little thing here like that. And maybe you want to end that with one of these like that. We have two parentheses basically. Before this one, maybe we can have a little space. And inside these parentheses, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this attribute component damage min. And this will allow me to get a better view of how much damage I'm actually doing. If you want, we can have that and then we can just 
add that to damage min here so we'll get the correct total value of our damage minimum and then we'll show how much of that is coming from the attribute component now control d that whole line actually what we're going to do is we're going to remove this it'll be a lot easier make sure to put the semicolon at the end here now let's start changing this up so this will be damage max damage max damage max and then at the end here as well damage max it's always good to run your game a little now and then all the time just not to code a lot and then wait for it you'll get a lot of errors and it'll be really painful now we can see what's going on so we have weapon level three weapon level or type two and then you can see the range here you can see the damage min and max the cool thing is we have a generation for our weapon so every time you start a new game you'll get a different type of weapon now i got a bigger range as well more damage max and min all that stuff you'll see that the damage is correct once you hit these enemies now another thing i find really annoying right now is that our text tag system doesn't really sit right with me i don't like the way it's working because we have acceleration now that looks beautiful but what we don't have is a deceleration a nice cool way of kind of starting off the text tag in a very high speed and slowing it down as it disappears i like that more that looks more like a cool text tag it gives it more of a punchy feel so we're going to go ahead and add that i'm going to add a boolean called reverse and this style is, is a little different. This is because I want to keep the acceleration if I ever want to use it later. We're going to use this as deceleration if the reverse value is set. So this might be a little confusing, but I'm sure you'll get it as we go. Make sure to change your text tag, not your text tag system. Add everything to our text tag inner class here. So add the bool reverse. And let's add a little value for this. I'm going to do that right after lifetime. So bool reverse float speed, all that. And let's set it. Let's say this reverse equals reverse below this comes the part which is very important so if we are reversing it we're going the other direction i want to start the text tag at the max speed i can and that is our speed variable so i'm going to say if reverse is set then i'm going to set velocity.x to dir x multiplied by speed and then y to dare y and then speed this will set our speed to the maximum speed at the start another thing i want to do into this constructor is very important i want to make sure our our values get transferred over whenever our default tags are copied to whatever array we're copying them to so reverse equals tag reverse and then velocity equals tag velocity don't forget this guys very 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 important make sure it looks exactly like this make sure you set the reverse and velocity here as well now next step once you have that it will start flipping out we need to create some functionality for this so i'm going to go in here i'm going to say if the acceleration is greater than zero we're going to use this thing here but inside we're going to do an additional little if statement and i'm going to say if reverse then we're going to do something totally different and we'll put the original code within an else statement here so control x that put it within the else statement and this will work just as usual but if our reverse value is set we're going to do it a little different so the only change we need basically is to set a minus here other than plus because remember our velocity will be at the starting point will be at the max and we'll slowly decrease that using these values instead of adding to it once that's done let's switch this up as well change these to less than and say 0.f 0.f and if it is then set this to 0.f now we have a nice limit for it as well now go to your text tag system.cpp and of course you're going to have to add the boolean here this is also very important make sure you count one two three parameters right after that put your true so don't set it at the wrong position because booleans can be counted as integers as well and that will somehow transform into a float and will give you a wrong value in, in one of these parameters if you put it at the wrong spot so remember to just count one two three parameters and set true do the same thing down here one two three true change these to 200 and change these to 200 so the second and the third values from the right should be 200 all of them and all of these should be true run your game and just check out your beautiful text tags and that's a lot cooler even your negative text tags are a lot cooler so they kind of go down to zero and they stop and they fade out i like that a lot that's a lot cooler now one problem i'm still having is that whenever we hit an enemy the experience text tag sometimes covers over the damage text tag because sometimes it's overlapping depends on where the enemy is we have a few more changes we have to do to that and those will be in game state go to your open open your game state.cpp and search for negative tag once you reach the line 314 hopefully that's for you as well wherever you add this tag we have a problem 
we're adding it to the enemy's position here it should spawn at the player's position because the player is taking damage so i'm going to change these to player and i'm going to maybe change that to 30 instead and that's great now we're going to search for experience tag and the same thing for experience i'm going to lower that down to 40 but i'm going to start it off at minus 30.f and now you'll see that the text tag pops up a lot higher up than it used to and our negative tags are popping from the player's position, not the enemy's position. And they're not overlapping as well, the experience and the regular tag. Now you guys can play around with this. You can add more data here if you want and all that. It looks great. The last thing I want to do quickly is add a nice little library thing where we can put some vector math stuff that we're using con continuously so we don't have to reuse code all the time. So I'm going to go ahead into my resources filter here and I'm going to add a new item. I'm going to add a C++ file called vectormath.cpp and I'm also going to add a header file. This header file is also called the same thing, vectormath.h, add that. And you'll see we'll have cpp and h here. I'm going to include stdafx.h in here. And here we're going to define a function called const float vector distance. And this is going to be the distance between two vectors. I'm not going to define it here, but what we're going to do is we're going to say const float x1 and copy the const float part, const float y1, const float x2, const float y2. So these are vectors. Basically, you can define another type of thing here. You can say sf vector 2f. And to do that, we need to include sfml system, include sfml system.hpp. And we're also going to include math dot h and this will be vec2 and vec1 vector 2f vec1 sometimes it's easier to use vectors like that instead of x1 y1 but i want to define both because we're going to use these let's go ahead and define both of these jump into your vector math.cpp make sure you've included stdfx here dot h and then vector math dot h also in the header file make sure you included these two now we can get to the math part now it's very easy it's nothing complicated to get the distance all we need to do is to first get the distance between the two vectors and to do that we're going to create a const float dx equals x2 minus x1 duplicate this line and just change all the x's to y y2 y1 and here's the actual length function we're going to do it right in the return part here so square root pow plus pow end that's the square root of the power of dx, the power of 2, and then dy, the power of 2. This will be the length of the vector. We don't want to normalize it. We don't want the direction of it. We just want the length of it. So that's why we're turning a float here. Now we can do the same thing for our vector 2 version here. And it's a little easier. We're going to just create a sf const sf vector 2f dvec and just do vec2 minus vec1. It's inbuilt already, so we don't have to do anything special. Now we'll get the difference vector already here. And we can just copy paste the whole thing here in the return statement and paste it in here. And we're going to say dvec.x and dvec.y. We're going to use this a lot, so it's really good to have. We can create a normalized function as well as soon as we need it. Sorry, I did forget to include it here. Let's create a custom section and let's include it. Include vector math.h. Always good to run to make sure nothing is bugging out. Good job, guys. It's running. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Thanks for watching this video. Really appreciate all your support. In the next one, we're going to keep working with these things. I'm not going to promise anything, but I want to get to the item and all inventory stuff very, very soon. But I do have a lot of resources with a lot of cool sprites that we're going to be using. So thank you guys for sticking with me. Drop a like, subscribe, press the bell icon. Check out all the description boxes, all that stuff. And for a lot of nice links. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.